Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Thursday, July the 26th, 2018, episode number 399. It's so good to see you this morning. It's a fine Thursday morning here. The rain has officially stopped. People have put down their hammers. The ARC building has slowed to a crawl as of this morning. And uh, maybe we're going to get back to some normalcy here in Northeast Pennsylvania. We're going to find out today. So uh, hope you guys are doing well. Hope your Wednesday, your hump day per se, went uh, went excellent and uh, was productive. And, uh, you know, a worthwhile, solid day where you got things done and you felt good about it. And now you're looking and you can see the weekend. And the weekend is right ahead and you're getting excited about some respite time or some things you have planned. And But we got to get through today, Thursday and Friday. So I hope you're ready to grab hold of today and make it count. Because you know what? If you got to go through it, you might as well make it worthwhile. What's the sense of just pushing it by? I heard somebody say once that as we grow up, you know, we're... We're, as we're kids, we can't wait to get to go to school. Then we go to school, we can't wait to turn 13 to be a teenager. Then we can't wait to get into high school. Then we get into high school, we can't wait to get our driver's license. Then we can't wait until we graduate. Then we can't wait to go to college and graduate college. Then we can't wait to get a job. Then we get working, we're like, we can't wait to retire. We're always looking forward, which is not bad, unless you're missing today. I hope you appreciate this day, this Thursday, and I hope uh, I hope you make uh, make it a worthwhile day. So, I've got some stories for you this morning, of course, and they're all going to be found at themorningroutine.live. Yes, if you go there, you'll find all the stories from history that I have shared in their entirety in their original format. Links to the actual article and the original author, and you can find them all there. And the links to all the social media, Twitter. Instagram, yes, post little links there every day, Uh uh-huh, and uh, all the different podcasts. So that said, my friends, let's move on and let's get to some stories. First story I have for you today is out of an author uh, out of medium.com. I share some stuff there, but I can only do like three articles a month or something like that because I don't have a paid subscription, so I'm limited on how much I can uh, share from there. Uh, The author of this article is Deb Nobleman, Ph.D., Which, take that as it does. Does that mean what she's about to say is worth more or not? I I don't know. But uh, let's just say this. I just got an email the other day, uh, like a just junk mail, that I didn't even know that I'm actually a a listed person on Medium that I could post articles. You know? So, uh, I don't know. What does that mean for the authors that they allow in there? If they let me in there. Who knows? But, uh, anyways... The article uh, out of uh, the medium with Deb Nobleman, PhD, is entitled, This is How to Plan a Day. Making a plan for your day instead of the day just happening. Let's see what Deb Nobleman has to say. She says, first, make a list. Make a list. You know, I've never been much of a list maker, but when I do make lists, they're very useful. There you go. Next, decide how long each thing will take. Group them together, right? Short little errand tasks, little uh, things a little bit more in-depth, maybe, uh, you know, 30 minutes or an hour each, or maybe you have some tasks that are, you know, a couple hours long. I don't know. But she says, decide how long each thing takes. Then determine the open time slots of the day. Ooh, this is about to be a little Jenga with time. I see this. Determine the open slots of the day. Then schedule each activity for its time spot, I gotta try this. This just sounds interesting, right? Except for I'm gonna need little pieces of paper that I can slide around to put into the things, you know? Uh, Schedule each activity, and then last she says, execute. I mean, this is a pretty simple way to plan your day, guys. Make a list, decide how long each thing on your list will take, determine the open time slots of the day, schedule each activity, and then execute. Seems easy enough, right? So that's uh, Deb, Deb Nobleman. Thank you very much, Deb, for helping us this morning on how to plan our day. I actually do want to try that. That's not sarcasm. I do want to try this. It sounds kind of cool. So, But uh, on we go, guys, into the next story that we have lined up for us today. The next story that we have is out of Newsweek.com. This story happened to have been covered by a lot of different sources. It's a pretty cool story. And... Um, uh, and it's not loading, which is never a good sign. 
So, uh, this story, though, had to do with, well, I remember the story, so I'm just going to share it without even looking at it. Oh, there it came. Anyways, uh, this story has to do with a, it's, it's a great story of a CEO of a company and a young man that gets a job with his company and how he treats them. This young man, oh, I never even did this. Anyways, this young man gets a job with this company. It's a moving company, right? And he uh, he goes and it's his, his car dies the night before he's supposed to be to work, right? Uh, and he tries to call around and can't find anybody to give him a ride to work the next day. I think it was going to be his first day of work if I'm, yeah, his first day on the job, actually. Can't find a ride anywhere. And he lives 20 miles away from his work. What would you do? First day of work, college student, 20 miles away is your job. What would you do? He started walking. Yes, he started walking. This guy walked. How many miles did he walk? It was late at night he was walking. I can't remember how. 3 a.m. in the morning, he was stopped by a policeman as he's walking down the road. 3 a.m. in the morning. And the policeman says, what's doing, man? 3 a.m. in the morning. Where are you going? And he tells him the story of how his car broke down and how he's walking to work. It's his first day of work with this moving company. And the policeman gives him a ride the rest of the way. The CEO of the moving company that he's working for hears about this story. And what does he do? He gives him a car. Gives him a 2014 Ford Escape because the young man was so driven and so, uh, what, conscientious, I guess, right, to make his first day of work, that he was going to walk 20 miles to be there. And uh, so they were able to give him a car, man. So it's very cool, man. Great little story there. I love it. I love the reward for somebody who's got hustle like that, who's willing to walk 20 miles. So uh, pretty cool. Anyways, uh, let's see. Last little story that I've got for you guys this morning. This one, it's really not a big deal, but... It is interesting. So you guys are used to seeing like, you know, when you're driving on the road and there's houses for sale in your neighborhood and there's the square for sale sign there, you know, and it's waving. And it's like, hey, I'm for sale. And it's whatever, right? It's a for sale sign. It's a nothing, right? It's a no big deal. It doesn't alter your life. Well, guess what? They have reinvented the for sale sign possibly. There is one company who has come up with a new design in the shape of a magnifying glass emitting a gentle glow from the inner rim of its ringed frame. Yes, this thing sounds cool. So at night, it's lit up. And at, during the day, it's eye-catchy. The purpose is to broadcast uh, to buyers that a home is on the market and thanks to embedded technology to give them access to a far richer set of information than a standard printer sign can get. Yes, it actually has information to broadcast to you. This final prototype, prototype is actually be, uh, being put on sale right now. They cost around $1,000. They're uh, created by a company named Compass. And uh, talk about cool, man. I mean, I can't wait to see one of these in front of uh, somebody's house. The last time, this is interesting. The last time that the for sale sign went through a major transformation was during the post-World War II suburban boom. At the time, two types of for sale signs dominated. Sandwich board styles, right? The little ones that little teepee. And rectangular styles affixed to a central metal post. Using newer, lighter metals, this gentleman, Oakley, created an L-shaped frame with a hinged hinge affixed to the horizontal bar at the top. The, the design allowed real estate agents to easily swap uh, in different prints. And that was the last time that they came through a for sale sign rehaul, uh, overhaul. And now they have this new one, this round one. I can't wait to see it. It's very, very cool. If you want to see some better pictures of it, you can go online and take a search. Compass is the name of the company, and it's a for sale sign that they have redone. So that's our news articles for today, guys, that are little stories. Let's move forward to some Google Trends, the top 10 most searched things yesterday on Google. Number one, top of the list, Facebook stock. Yes, Facebook puts privacy first and the stock plunges 20% because there's nothing that stockholders want more than lack of privacy. 
and profits. So there you go, I guess. I don't know. Number two, TMZ is trending at number two. Number three, Powerball, as in the lottery, is trending at number three with a jackpot of $147 million to be drawn last night. Uh, number four, Castle Rock is at number four. Number five, Sergio Marchione. Marchione. He's the guy who revived Fiat and Chrysler. Number six, Pakistan election 2018 results. Number seven, Greece, as in the country. Number eight, Michael Cohen is trending at number eight. Number nine, Donald Trump star. Um, walk of fame. Uh, oh, Trump's Hollywood uh, walk of fame star is smashed. Okay. And number 10, Giants versus Mariners, as in the baseball game. So that's what's trending on the top 10 most searched things yesterday on Google. Let's move forward, guys, and slow down just a hair and soak in a great passage of wisdom this morning. Today's passage of wisdom, you kind of saw a theme so far this week going on about, uh, you know, how we should be treating other people and, and different things like that. Today is a continuation of this thought process of a week of encouraging us, uh, you know, to, to a different way to look at things. The, today's passage is out of Luke, Luke chapter 6, verse 35. But love your enemies. We could stop right there. We don't even have to go any further. Right there is compelling enough to drive us out of our minds right? Love your enemies. We're not talking about the people that you just don't like. We're talking about enemies, the people who want your destruction, the people who would say anything about you to tear you down in, in a room of people when you don't know. We're talking about those people. Love your enemies. Do what is good and lend expecting nothing in return, then your reward will be great. Wow. Talk about a passage. Love your enemies stands on its own. Do what is good and lend expecting nothing in return. Being a giver. Being somebody who needs and you lend instead of like waiting around, when are they going to pay me back? When are they, you know, if they pay you back, great. But lend expecting nothing in return then your reward will be great. Wow. We've got a lot to work on today if we want to soak this passage in and make it part of our life, right? Holy cow, that's big. Guys, let's pray and let's get this day started. Father, good morning. Father, we thank you for this excellent, excellent Thursday. Another fantastic day that you've given us that we were able to wake up and get up and the opportunity to go out and make a difference in somebody's life today. Father, we thank you for your passage this morning and Man, it's like a it's like a stiff arm juke in a football game, man. It's it's like love your enemies is so difficult, and then lending expecting nothing in return is a little bit easier for some. And and, and but boy, Father, help us to really soak this in today, and apply this to our thoughts and our actions. Help us to be the person that does this without having to force ourselves to do it that it just comes natural to love our enemies. That's big. Father, we thank you for this passage. We hope that you've uh, grant us protection today as we go out, guide us, help us to not miss the opportunities. I pray that right now that the Holy Spirit walks with us today and, uh, and guides us and guides our actions and fills our sails with wind and strength and courage as we, as we go through the day. Keep us empowered as the days can sometimes be longer than we want them to be. And we need your strength and your focus. We love you and we thank you for the grace and love you give us each and every moment of every day. Amen. And that, my friends, is a wrap. Thanks for being here this morning in the morning routine. I hope that your day goes exceptionally well. I can't wait to be back here tomorrow morning with you once again. And until tomorrow morning, don't you forget that today, this very day, right now, right now, is a perfect time to spend a moment thinking about what is it that you are meant to be? What's the purpose that God created you and mine for? And then to have the courage to go and act on that. Have a great day, guys. I love you.